Welcome to the second video in the ultracapacitor testing series. A lot of you have commented that ultracapacitor should be balanced, and I had some comments and some opinions on that, so I figured I should test it. Let's take a look. Six Maxwell BCAP3000 ultracapacitors are used in series for this test. The same capacitors are used for all tests, and the rig is shown here. I'm going to jump to the end so that way you can see how this test ends up. Uh, save a little bit of time if you don't want to watch the actual videos of how the audio behaves. Here you can see that when we add ultracapacitors to a battery in parallel, we greatly extend the amount of time it takes to drop from the initial voltage down to 12 volts. Now for all of those tests, I started at a slightly different start voltage just based on the charging characteristics and I was basically trying to get the test done. Uh, the starting voltage necessarily isn't as concerning as what the shape of the curve looks like. So we can still make a comparison there. Now let's go look at the individual tests and see how the actual cells behaved. The first test is with both batteries and capacitors in parallel. And this basically gives us the voltage drop across each cell. I did the math for you based on analyzing the video. Uh, it shows you the time on the far right in seconds, and it also uh, kind of tracks the max to min and the uh, overall voltage at each cell. Now, everyone's concern was whether or not you're going to have an imbalance and whether we need balancing circuits. Uh, the testing actually does reveal that I have one cell that is causing a different voltage drop and thus increasing the voltage seen across the other capacitors. So, your gut feels right, and we're going to be experimenting in future videos with balancing methods. The testing results of the battery only are shown here just to be consistent. Of course, they don't have any extra data to them because the capacitors weren't involved. The test of ultracapacitors only was surprising. They actually lasted longer than I expected. But we can see here, yet again, we still have very consistent cell 3. It has a voltage drop across it that appears to be problematic. And lastly, I wanted to see how long it takes to charge using a current limiting battery charger. And I show the cell voltage voltages over time for reference as well. You'll see that test later on. The setup is pretty straightforward and simple. I have a set of six Maxwell BCAP 3000 capacitors all wired in the series configuration. They are 2.7 volts each. I have them in parallel with an Optima blue top battery. That battery has the ability to be recharged as needed. I have an older Rockford Fosgate Punch 800A2. That amplifier was chosen simply because it has the ability to draw a lot of current and I want to speed this whole test up. From a metering standpoint, I have, this is just a spare, I have five volt meters and one on top, so a total of six running. Now what they're doing is these voltmeters actually have three connections. They have voltage, oh, 12 volts, and ground for a power in general. Then they have a sense wire. Well, that sense wire is relative to the ground, so I can't actually measure across each of the caps as I originally wanted to. <clears throat> Instead, what I have to do is measure between each cap so you can see the difference. And you're going to have to do a little bit of math. I'll do some math for you in the video. But essentially what we're looking to see is how much imbalance do we have and what is the actual voltage drop across each one of these caps while it's in use? Now this meter over here is just an analog meter. It's older, but what's nice about it is if there's any fluctuations within the voltage, that meter is going to pick it up much more sensitive than these. Now from a source standpoint, I have an iPad running directly into the Rockford Fosgate, and I have that running a sub bridged and then two speakers that are up on the bench. So what we used to call tri-mode amplifiers running full range. Uh, that's just basically because when I ran the sub only, I didn't feel like listening to it. <laughs> so we're going to play some music. I'm specifically going to choose uh, Exodus by Bob Marley. It's a seven-minute uh, song. It's alive. It's got a little bit of low end. It's got music in general. We're going to play that, and essentially what I'm going to do is see how long it takes to get from a float voltage down to 12 volts and time it with and without the caps. And we're going to see, you get to see the behavior of the capacitors of music, and then we'll do a quick reference to say, do the caps actually benefit us in any way, shape, or form? 
So there's going to be some background noise going on. This is in my house. This is in my basement. I got children upstairs. I got a wife upstairs. They're not trying to be super quiet just because I'm trying to do this. Now, while this is probably the most dangerous thing I've said on this bench, I do have fusing on both connections connected to the battery and obviously the connection between the battery and the cap, primarily because that does let me pull that maxi fuse. And for the second part of this test, it'll make the process a little bit easier. Um, so from a turn on standpoint, what I've done is I have use the remote turn on coming directly up the battery terminal we're at 12.9 volts let us see So I went ahead and muted the audio and sped the video up by four times because quite honestly this video is going to be a lot longer if I didn't do that. Uh, I wanted to show how the individual cells drop over time. Now each of the three tests will be shown at four times speed so relatively speaking you could compare them but uh, the graphs at the very beginning and the tables at the very beginning of the video you know, they are really the reference that you want to use. This is just to show you how each of these cells drop over time. Now again, I used music because I wanted a realistic load. If we're going to use these in an automotive application for riding out voltage undulations in an audio system, well, this is a realistic test of that. So I'm not going to voice over all of them, but I did want to at least mention why I was speeding this up to essentially save the buddy a bunch of time. All right, so we got five minutes, 48 seconds out of that. Now you should know that this battery is probably 12 years old. So as far as a judge of how fast this is draining, that's not what we're looking at. What, I'm, what we're looking at really is how do these individual cells behave as we are putting a load on them and listening to music, which is really the intent of this entire com combination. Secondly, as I take the caps out, recharge the battery, get it back to 12.9 volts, start the track over again, we will see. Did it make a difference? We'll find out. Honestly, I have no idea. I haven't actually ran this test before, so it is what it is. All right, so as we've, as you can see, I've removed the uh, fuse, so the caps are no longer engaged. This meter is just for this. Remember, we're gonna start it when the battery hits 12.9, so Apparently the caps were stabilizing there a little bit. We will go ahead and back this up. All the other cells are off, which is also evidence that the caps aren't involved in this test. And since I can show you that the maxi fuse connecting and paralleling the caps to the battery are is obviously missing, uh, this is a test of just the battery's ability to run the amplifier.
that's at three minutes and four seconds. So we can certainly see that, surprisingly enough, uh, I thought the battery was going to do a lot better on its own. Uh, but instead, what we noticed is that when we paired the caps with the battery, we got almost twice as much playtime before we dropped to uh, 12 volts. And I guess there was, you know, as soon as I loaded the amplifier up on the battery, we saw an immediate drop from 13 to 12.7 and a rebound to 12.8. Uh, just with the turn on, we did not see that when we had the capacitors in there. I guess the last test I could do is caps only, even though that's a silly test because that's not the intent of those, but why not? I got all this stuff set up. Probably would really make some sense. All right, let's set up for that. All right, now as you can see, the battery is gone. It's actually down here under the table. So what I'm gonna try and do is run this amplifier on capacitors alone. So as soon as I insert this fuse, we start our countdown. I expect the voltage to drop pretty quickly. So we're on. 13.2. Let's just go ahead and start it. Keep in mind that obviously we're at 13.2 volts and uh, we expect that to drop very, very quickly. If not, we'll just do volts over time. So we made it two minutes 25 seconds that's honestly a lot longer than i thought it was going to make it uh, these capacitors really are designed to supplement not to be the sole source of energy however it did a lot better than i thought it would and that's pretty fascinating uh, so i guess the last thing to show you is recharging with a battery charger and it helps if you have a cat uh, for some reason you can use the stack electricity of the cat and then that helps the batteries the capacitor is charged a little bit faster. So what I'm going to do is set my battery charger at 12 volts, or 12 amps I should say, and it's going to be on deep cycle. And let's go ahead and turn off the amplifier. Just get down. Now as it's charging, what you're paying attention to, and there's no resistors in this. In my previous video, I told you about connecting directly to a battery and making sure that you limit the current. Well, this is a current limiting charger. Most of your battery chargers are. So you can just directly connect this up and it's just gonna limit to 12 amps and it's gonna dump that voltage in. It's gonna get it all the way up to 14.4. Remember, before you connect your capacitors to your battery bank, you wanna make sure that they are within a volt or so um, volt and a half maybe if you start getting you know like you got a nine volt set of caps and you got a 12.5 or 12.8 battery I would throw a little bit of juice on these first now addition as it's going up you want to pay attention to the voltage drop across the individual cells remember the whole reason I'm making this video is because most of you have commented on the lack of balancing so we're going to talk a little bit later about balancing when to do it when not to do it Remember, this is a 12.7 12 volt capacitor, and I'm at 13.5, and I'm only at 12.3 across the first one. And you can see that's pretty well balanced all the way across. So we would actually have to charge this bank up to 16.1 volts to be at 12.7 for each one of those. Now, for the most part in a car, we're not going to hit 16.1 volts. You might hit 15 in some GM vehicles, 
Uh, the alternators are regulated to 14.4. But even at 15, we're still not at that threshold. So this is the charger is basically going to say that it's ready as soon as it hits 14.4, and then it's going to level off. And at that point, we have a cap bank that's charged to 14.4 volts. Next, what we'll try and delve into is balancing. What is balancing? Why would you do it? When would you do it? Um, and then I'll break down some of the differences in voltages that we've seen across the, a lot of this testing. So at this point, my charger says that the uh, caps are fully charged, at least because it thinks it's a battery. And you can see that's a charger there. So if you have any questions on this process, let me know. Uh, obviously, I'm sure you will. So to finish up, here's again the graph of voltage over time for each of the tests. You can see the shape of the curve and essentially that, as you would expect, adding the capacitors improved the way that the system behaved. I kept the same volume level for each test. In the beginning of the video, I mentioned that cell 3 was lower. Obviously, cell 2 is also lower. Uh, now, you know, a tenth of a volt here or there. Is that really problematic? Well, as we start changing tenths of a volt across these cells, you can see that cell 1 being higher is the one that's at risk of actually exceeding its voltage th threshold. So, to those of you that said you wanted to see balancing, uh, this is a good argument for you to use. Why? Now, with the charging graph, I got up to 14.2 volts. We can see I'm at 2.5 on the cap. Uh, the maximum voltage rating of these capacitors is 2.8. Uh, and that's for a short duration so we're getting at the point where I do believe that something to limit the voltage across not necessarily balancing but something that protects for over voltage so I got a couple circuits that I'm gonna be testing in the next video and as soon as I get them soldered up and get the videos taken we'll get them shared it will not be as long between the next one as it was for this one so I appreciate your patience